As we know the plans then, Simon, things should start to get run back to normal tomorrow. Well, behind me, you can see they've started to put the barriers out. They arrived in the last half an hour or so to try and uh, organise the queue that's inevitably going to build up from tomorrow morning. The first train's going to start running at about 7.30 in the morning. They're going to run all the way through the day until about 6 o'clock. Uh, it's a two-thirds of their normal service. They're hoping to carry about 26,000 people tomorrow. There are people already queuing here uh, who are going to camp out overnight. I was talking to some French students. Uh, they've basically come here. They were here since 3 o'clock this morning hoping to get away. They're going to go all the way through the night. Some other people there, a lady I spoke to who's uh, run out of money. She can't stay in a hotel anymore. She too is going to have to stay here. Now, they would obviously hope that people will come staggered through the day, uh, but it's, very, it's, it's inevitable and not very likely that there will be a huge number of people here first thing in the morning. Uh, there's tea and coffee, etc. for people there, but uh, they are expecting uh, quite an influx. Okay, Simon, thanks very much indeed. Now, online, lots of discussion about the way that Eurostar failed to keep customers informed, especially in the way that they used or didn't use technology and social media. Joining me now is the web PR expert Chris Reed from brewdigital.com. Good to see you, Chris. Good evening. Um, the lack of information, I think, was the most distressing, uh, particularly for passengers stuck. You think they should have done more? I think that they were a bit slow off the mark. Um, Eurostar have been very good at using social media as a m part of marketing campaigns, and actually their little little break, big difference site was doing very well. But I think when a crisis happens, there's an expectation both from the people actually being infected by that crisis, but others who are looking on that, that big corporations will use those same channels to try and communicate with them, to listen to, to the issues that are being raised, to answer questions, mm -hmm. and also to a certain extent to broadcast help and support. The, the fantastic thing about social media, particularly Twitter, is that it can be a very private conversation. It can be, you know, pure broadcast. Now I think that they've, they've got things uh, up and running, but there certainly was a gap when there was a, a big expectation that they would be doing more. And, and the sort of ability of these things to spread the word, isn't it? People can either retweet or pass on text messages to one another, and maybe that gets the word out f much further than that original mail shot, doesn't it? It, it may well do. I think one of the things that uh, Twitter showed with this is that uh, you know there's one or two people who were directly affected by it who are tweeting out their experience and garnering a huge amount of sympathy from certainly social media communities. And I think where Eurostar were, were slower to, 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 to react to that was to reassure them, to tell them what was happening. Well, now, I wonder if this is going to turn into a sort of textbook case in the PR world. You'll know more about it than me. Uh, there was a problem, wasn't there? Eurostar seemed quite slow. Then there's the fact that the Eurotunnel people actually look after an emergency in the tunnel. So there's a bit of not our problem, it's theirs, I suppose, going on. And then, as you say, they have marketing tools, but they didn't really have reactive tools, not yeah. the right people available on a keyboard. I, mean, I think what we will say, what we will be seeing is a real watershed in terms of crisis communications, in terms of how big organisations prepare for these sorts of things. And most organisations do prepare for them. They think very carefully about the people they need to have in the room, when to brief journalists, when the chief exec will yeah. go and, and, and do all that. Sort of thing. I think I'm what we'll see. They didn't. Well, I think what we'll see more and more is that the social media experts will be part of that because word travels very quickly and is very effective. But you've got to have the right people using the right tools at the right time to make it work. Okay, Chris. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Coming up then, the most popular web video, including the cat that is too lazy to climb the stairs. Why everyone online is sharing this video of the moment a policeman drew a gun during a snowball fight.